Yeah, so there we are. We got a Blitz game. Let me try not to hang all my pieces in this one, too. Um, okay. We've transposed into the something, something, I don't know system. It's, I'm trying to make it popular. Um, okay, I got the pressure here. I have to keep this diagonal open for my bishop. Oh, hang on. Yeah, let's pretend that we didn't hang the pawn and we got here by some move order which actually made sense. Okay, you guys can pretend with me, right? That's what we're going to do here. Wow, this feels a lot calmer already. Look, I take a pawn. Uh, I take a pawn again, and everything's pinned. Knight's pinned, pawn's pinned. And I take another pawn. This is so much calmer. Why doesn't everybody do this? What's with this bullet popularity stuff? <laughs> Uh, okay, so I'm hitting the rook and the knight. Uh, the one thing that's not in my favor is this big discovery that is going to come up. But in the meantime, uh, he still has to deal with the threat on the knight. Um, okay, and this shuts out the bishop. Oh, interestingly, this is almost... Okay. Yeah. Hanging pieces for the win. Okay. Good game. Um, yeah, that one doesn't need to be analyzed. Um, okay, so what's going on at the moment? There's the weekly super blitz. Hourly hyper bullet. The weekly blitz. Well, the super blitz seems to be popular. Let's try it out. Oh, wow, this this is way more relaxing. Okay, let's go, Pawn. You can do it. Uh, and we got a Scandinavian Gambit, or is this called an Icelandic Gambit? I don't remember. All I do remember is that I just play my knight out, and unlike most people who push d4, I just push d3. Um, and black just has a more difficult time against this. Sure, he's got a little bit more space, but overall, this is not very hard for white to play. At least I've never seen black get terrific compensation for the pawn. Now maybe there is something here, and I just haven't seen it yet, but um, I just am not convinced that this gambit's any good. Yes, on occasion I've lost to this opening, um, but I don't think that that was the fault of the opening. Oh yeah, you're right, I forgot. I my stream title says I'm going berserk, does it not? Yeah, I should try doing that, just for fun. Although, you guys were telling me I should play a little slower, right? But should I still go berserk when I play slower? Or would that defeat the point? Um, yeah, we're going to try going berserk a few games this tournament. Starting now, no, this game. <laughs> oh, if only only I could do that with the game in progress. Um, so... Let's just centralize the knight. And the point here is that the knight protects pretty well against the other knight. Um, 
Oh, he's actually trying to win my E pawn. And I guess I've let him win it. But now I get his B pawn, and I'm threatening this check, and my knight goes up there, and who knows. So this isn't so bad. Yes, I do have to move my rook. So we got Super Boob saying I should go Berserk. And OG Chess saying, you know, this is pretty cool. There's no need to ruin a good thing. Uh, maybe I could provide commentary on the faster game. We'll maybe give it a try. If it doesn't go well, then I could always go back to playing a little slower here. So, I am hungry. I need to get some food while my opponent thinks. Oh, I found my food! It's right over here. Excellent. Um, so I was going to do bishop d5 check. Now let me do... Do I have a tactic on b7? I could take either way on b7, but if I do knight takes the queen moves, and then my knight has a tempo to go anywhere, and discover an attack on the rook. But, yeah, I think it's... Oh, hang on. Yeah, so this is what I should do. Bishop b7, he moves the rook, bishop d5, something happens and then knight takes bishop. Assuming I don't find better. Oh, this actually accelerates my attack, so yeah. Um, my bishop out of harm's way, and now I have to debate, do I take this bishop or do I just take on f4? I don't think that's a really good bishop of his. Um, although it does oppose my bishop on c6. Rather, um, he could play c6 to kick my bishop. Um, hmm. Yeah, we're taking that. Just because I said so. Oh wait, I could fork this queen and knight. There we go. I've been playing chess since it was first invented. Or should I say, since I first invented it? No. <laughs> um, no, that'd be awesome. And wildly untrue. <laughs> Surprisingly, this move doesn't lose me the game. Let's play it. <laughs> Oh yeah, all that pure not losing the game skill. It takes some skill to be able to grovel in difficult position. All right, wow, I'm starting the tournament with a win. Okay. Only an hour ten remaining of this super blitz. Oh, I forgot to go berserk. Bummer. I don't think either one of us knows 
what we're doing here. Um, So let me shuffle my pieces a bit so they aren't such obvious targets for the knight. I shouldn't have allowed the knight here in the first place, but now that I have, I have to evict it without losing all my pieces. Well, that's a free knight. night. Now I just do rook takes here and my knight's protected. Sure, I don't have any pawns, but... Uh, Wait, I'm up a rook for a pawn. That's the material imbalance. And so if I can just get enough time to activate that rook, I'll be A-OK -okay here. There we go. Open a line or two like so. Um, yeah, this is kind of loose at the moment, but... Um, you know, if I can open the A file and get my rook out, that won't be such a point of contention. I'm more concerned about getting my pieces active than worrying about king safety. Um, and now the fun part begins, right? Who knows this endgame? Do any of you guys know this endgame? So I can... no. I was going to say I could use some help, but... I'm just joking, obviously. Um, yeah, this is not a commonly known endgame. Oh, hang on. This will get rid of the bishop pair, assuming he takes my knight. Okay, so I'm still up a rook-ish something. A knight on an open board is not the best attacker, but a knight and a queen working together can be quite a potent force. So I have to find a way to activate my queen, which currently sits on f1, and make it do something useful. Um, Okay, this doesn't hang anything. Note if the queens get traded and I end up losing a rook, I can still win the endgame. Um, okay, now I'm threatening all kinds of fun stuff. Um, Starting with this, how about that? Maybe he'll resign. There we go. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna go berserk this next game. Really, I need just a browser plugin that automatically hits the button for me so that I don't forget to do it. Anybody codes, uh, say, a Grease Monkey plugin and shows me the source code, maybe I'll use it. Alright, we're going Berserk. As promised. There we go. Hope you guys are happy. Because uh, my mouse is slipping all over the place. Um. So there's a very good chance I'm going to hang a piece accidentally. 
But this is what the crowd wants. This is what the crowd's going to get. All right. How many do I play per day? Well, it depends on the day. Um, like, in the middle of the week, I don't have time for chess, or I don't play it very much. On weekends, I also don't play it very much. Um, but more so than on weekdays. This wasn't always the case. Um, it does take a lot of practice and a lot of time and effort and discipline to get anywhere with any skill, really. Chess or anything else. Um, so, like if you've read, say, I don't know, 20 or 30 chess books, um, and studied your own games and gone to chess clubs and participated in tournaments, yeah, you could do this kind of play too. Um, but you have to enjoy what you're doing. It definitely takes time and effort to become good at anything. Uh, this is pretty ugly. Bishop takes. Yeah, I couldn't stop it. Commence phase two. Grovel. Lots of groveling going to happen here. Um, need f5, which is not going to work, but we're going to try for it anyway. Uh, get out of the pin. Maybe I should have checked him first, because now he has time for... Well, that's not the pawn move he should play. He should have played g4. See, now my knight can land on g4, so that's something he's got to worry about. Uh, so I step out of this pin. Oh, I have to take the knight. That's a disappointment. That makes a lot of my groveling much more challenging. Um, because now at this point I'm just hoping he doesn't find or he misevaluates bishop d5. Um, okay, so now there's no pin on f7. So I'm kind of not suffering as badly. Okay. Need my rook on an open line. I don't know what just happened there. He's trying to beat me on time, but not doing a very good job at it. Well, it's not just on time, then. He's actually trying to win the position. Kudos to him, because he's actually making good progress now. Um, I'm not defending as I need to. And victory. Oh, Rook H7 would have been mate. Really? You're probably right. I, I thought I... Hmm, that's disturbing. I should see things like that. I was going to move my queen to f5, 
You know, if he hadn't played bishop g4, I would have just dropped my queen on f5. But because he brought his bishop out, then I saw the bishop guards f5. So, yeah. Okay, who thinks I can save this one? Place your bets. <laughs> oh my god, this looks so hopeless. This looks so incredibly hopeless. Um, <laughs> hang on. I might have cheesed my way into something here. Something almost entirely hopeless. Um. Let's see. Okay, so I don't win the pawn race, so I have to keep the rooks on the board. Uh, we'll hit this pawn. Truly, this is spectacular. Um... I should not be able to draw this. People do understand that, right? That, like, there's no... Okay. There's no defending this for white. Um, yeah. So unless he... Yeah, okay, he's got it. He's got it. That was amazing. <laughs> Oh, all right, so let's go berserk, because that's what they're demanding. It's not that I'm actively ignoring people, it's just that I have no time to look over at the chat window anymore, because people in the chat window told me that I should be um, going berserk. Damn it, he doesn't transpose into the Italian. People need to learn the best opening ever. Let's see, now he plays d4, but now it's just not anywhere near as good. Um. Yeah, variants are good fun. I peek over at the chat window, I lose a few seconds. Truly, I will lose the tournament this way, and all my rating points. But yeah, variants are cool. Um, knight c4? Knight c4, please? Pretty please? With the cherry? Oh, actually, it doesn't work for me, because he just does rook c1. Um, okay. You didn't hear any of that. I'm just going to attack this. Just play reasonable, non trappy developing moves. Um. Okie dokie. Let's keep the knight on the board and try to do stuff. Stuff. All this stuff. This is how a knight moves. Um. But no, I could play f6 and then knight d3. Um. Because I expect he's going to play rook c1 to avoid this obvious fork uh, forkiness. Um, 
Okay, so what else? What are people saying? Ah, people are saying I should not go berserk. Um, okay, now there's... Okay. Yeah, I'm not aware... Well, nothing's official on the books in terms of this variant, but I, I know one's under development. Um, but again, as is with just about everything on this site, I have no idea when it's going to get released. Also, I missed the little clock icon. It was really cool. It's a shame. I'm sure there was good reason to get rid of it, but I'm going to have to find a way to add the icon back, because I really liked it. It'll, I mean, sure, it looks goofy, but either that or I've got to change this to some digital uh, mono space output. That's probably what it should do. Let's just make it look like a... a people would say an alarm clock, but just a digital readout. Pawn takes wins a pawn. Yep, and now he's up two pawns. But, does he know how to activate his rooks? Okay. We'll activate the other rook. Oh, he's just taking my pawn. I'm being completely ignorant to what he's doing, as he is to me. Um, also, I have 17 seconds left, so it's kind of excusable that I'm paying no attention. Um, don't know what his excuse is. Now he's going to play rook a1. No, no, no rook a1. All right. And now the carnage begins. I just, because it's not that decisive, but, um, this is the slowest blitz game ever. There we go. Second try, I found the mate in one. Oh, that's what the icon was. So, yeah, I guess it looked like an analog clock. Um, I missed a free night. Okay. You're probably right. Yeah, people have been asking me not to go berserk, so this time I'll choose not to. And we'll actually get a game. Oh, is this going to be Italian? No, he doesn't play C3. Okay, we get this thing. Which actually is respectable, but I hate it. Um, why would you play this thing when you could play the Italian? Uh, you people. Alright, let's just drop the knight back here. This has got to be okay for, or, I mean, equal. Okay is kind of an overstatement, because this is incredibly difficult to play and not lose. But I think it's equal, objectively speaking. And now it's not quite equal. Um... Like I said, this is just a really hard opening. And I keep playing it in the hopes that eventually I'm going to figure it out. Um, but that's kind of hope chess, is it not? Okay, well, so... Okay, I'm going to trade queens and make use of my active king. Okay, how do I make any progress here? Like, I knew if I opposed him on the g-file, the rooks just get traded. Which is not what I'm going for. Um, 
but I don't see any way for me to make progress. That's kind of a problem. I mean, I keep grabbing more and more space, but I need to find some tactics or something that works in my favor. Now he plays rook g6. Oh, I should have done king c7. Uh, should have done king c7 first, although then I lose material. Yeah, this is just lost. Okay. Yeah, no, he steps out of the pin before I have time for bishop g4. We saw that in the game. Um, I'm not sure if that was always the case that he had time to play king e4 to step out of the pin. Um, or king e3. But I'm pretty sure he always had that opportunity. And so rook f8... It's just bad. I think it's lost as soon as I played rook h8 there, but I didn't see anything else. Oh, I should have gone berserk. Okay. Did not see any other options. Okay, we'll attack the knight. Move our queen to safety. So far, so good. My, haven't I given my opponent something to think about here? Where is he going to put that knight? Uh, I guess he doesn't care. This is one interesting developing scheme by my opponent. Um... So, let me just finish my development and drop my knight on a d6 somehow. Sure, let's sack a pawn. Get the knight to d6 this way. There we go. Knight is on d6. Mission accomplished. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do now. I already accomplished my mission. Okay, let's just kick the knight. Knight's cramping my style. And then bring out the bishop. My opponent's position isn't terrible here. Um, because, uh, okay, why do I not have a useful discovery? This is the best discovery I have, and it's kind of silly. Um, okay, now there are some open lines to work with, though. So after we trade rooks, and then I do this check, um, well, uh, do I take with the bishop? I'm going to be boring, and I'm going to do bishop takes. And then I'm going to be boring and trade rooks. And, you know, just grind this down in a boring old boring endgame. Yep. Oh, hang on. We got a tactic. Apparently the boringness was too much for my opponent. Okay. Let's see if he knows how to defend this one. It might be difficult for black. Um, yeah, that's not the right way to defend. Okie dokie. Take a queen. Uh, 
You know, if we had gone berserk, at this point we would have three seconds remaining. I'm just saying. King G4. Oh, wait, hang on, this is mate. There we go. So theoretically, had I gone berserk, maybe I could have won it. Um, who knows? Who knows, indeed. So, how's everybody doing? I think you guys would rather that I don't go berserk, and that I just work my way up to the top and get some good opponents. As opposed to playing berserk moves against um, low-rated players. Um, okay, we're gonna smith more a gambit this. Only because this is... oh, okay, never mind. Well, because I don't want to play mainline Sicilians every single game. No, oh, moving the queen's the last thing white should do in these openings. After deciding where all the other pieces go, then move the queen. That's how white should be playing this, um, as opposed to how I am playing this. Okay, um, so... Yeah, to get my knight to the center, I've got to take a detour through f1, through e3, and now I control this square. And so now I just pile everything up. I mean, this is pretty standard stuff here, unless I'm missing something. That I'm missing that this is hard to defend. Um, if I go forward, I lose material, so I have to defend like so. Yep, yep, yep. There's always some counterbalancing force that makes the obvious thing never work. Um, okay, so we'll step back. With d5, I just take on e5. Hey, look! I still hung the pawn. I'm just that great. Okay. Oh, wait. Let's not hang the rook, too. Um, sure, that looks like a decent-ish square for the rook. Okay. And I'll just pile on d6. In fact, I could have just taken e5, which was completely free. Um, but that would have made too much sense. Uh, so now I'm still threatening to take on e5. He just plays bishop g7. And my threat vanishes into thin air. Or he doesn't play it, and I just take the free pawn. Haha! -ha! Truly, my moment of genius is shining. Um, well, no, in the Sicilian, I'm not especially fond of the bishop pair. Um, I know, like, somebody like Fisher would be all over having the bishop pair in the Sicilian. Um, I'm more about just get out of theory and play a chess game and get into an end game. Doesn't really matter which one, just pick one. Okay, so my knight's decent on d4. Now I have to find a way to get my other knight somewhere useful. Um, let's say b4. Because f5's taken. Okay. Oh, hang! Oh my goodness. Even though I have not gone berserk, perhaps in a sense I have. Anyway. Mm. 
Yeah, chess is hard. Okay. Can't let that rook stay there forever. Um, we're not going to play knight d4 because that would lose material. <clears throat> um, so yeah. The rest of this consists of me not losing material and trying to win. But mostly not hanging anything, because I'm in a position of strength here somehow. Somehow I've gotten the better of my higher rated opponent. Um, so I just need to find a way to activate my remaining pieces. Uh, and preferably just win more material and make this a lot easier. Uh, I'm gonna sack. The sack can't be terrible. Let's go pawns, let's go. Queen one. Check. Victory is mine. That was most excellently played. Clearly there was no room for improvement over the game moves. Alright, so I, I've learned in this opening, play d6 before doing knight e7 and castling. I learned that the hard way, because if you do this set of moves wrong, uh, you can sometimes hang the bishop on c5, and it's hilarious when it happens. And you learn not to do it twice, basically. Can we see d5? d5 would be oh so glorious here. Because then I take the rook and then fork the king and the queen. If I could just get this pawn to move. It's not moving. Not this turn. He's more likely to play e5, really. Okay. Yep. So I have no trickiness here. Well, now he just wins the c pawn. You know, if he just takes it. Um, so in some sense I've been tricky. Uh, and that my opponent has to find two move tactics. But in some sense I really haven't. Um, once this bishop moves, or this pawn moves, then I'll trade the knights. I just don't want to spend the tempo to do it if I don't have to. Okay, so now we threaten this stuff. Granted, this punch, this e5 punches through first. Um, okay, so I guess we're not trading bishops, we're just trading a bishop for a rook. Which is a thing. Um, in some openings it actually isn't such a bad thing, that particular trade. Um, and this one, I don't know. Like, he's got his two bishops, they're all lined up right next to each other. 
ready to rain down who knows what on my position. Um, so, plus, it's kind of hard for my queen to get somewhere useful. I have to pull back so I can play my pawn to f4, 5. 4, 5, 7, one of those squares. Um, but yeah, having done this with the pawn, uh, I can't take this. Well, that's a shame. Now I can take it, but it's not going to be there much longer. Um, okay, so, yeah, he's very likely getting back the exchange. On the other hand, my knight embedded this deep into this position might be worth uh, more than a knight. Um, okay, so I've got a light square blockade. All these two light squares are blockaded. All two of them. Um, and now I just need to... Um, nope, that's the wrong square. There we are. I found it. Somehow, this this mouse is just flaking out all over the place on me. <laughs> um, but sure, this is the idea. Um, and if I can trade queens uh, and not get mated, so much the better. Um. <laughs> yeah, this is not panning out the way I'd hoped. Oh, hang on, I've got pawns too. Why don't I use my pawns? Maybe because I'm trying to win on time. Boop. But no, this is what I should have been doing. Distract the bishop so I can take e5. That's how you make progress there. Alright, let's get a Budapest Gambit. Oh. Or not. Here. This will give my opponent something to think about. I'm not saying it's going to work, but it's definitely a thing to think about. Sorry for my little delay there. Oh! Uh, I got some weird text message from who knows who. I have no idea what they're talking about. Uh, okay, let's move my king here. Nice safe place. And there's nowhere safer for a king than in a wide open center. Um, no, I'm now threatening to do fun stuff on g3. It's even more fun uh, if we trade first. Okay, so sacking on g3 this instant doesn't work. Um, Yeah, uh, not even remotely close. Um. Oh, hey, look, we got an endgame. My opponent underestimated my chances here. And now we'll see just how smashing these rooks can be. Oh, I forgot. My other rook was not on g8. Um, that makes this more challenging, for sure. Pro tip, don't hang, don't forget where your pieces are. Um, okay, so my odds in this game went down a little bit when he took my rook. Uh, I still could create some counterplay here, but it's not going to be anywhere as easy as it would have been if I'd still had my rook. Um, Okay, we're talking now more about stalemate chances than actual winning chances. Um, but that's okay. 
You just have to keep lowering expectations until whatever goal you achieve is good enough. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, you'd think that my opponent would be able to put this away. Um, you'd think that it wouldn't be that hard for him to do. But what does anybody know? Chess is hard. I don't know why he's doing all these random shuffling moves. It's not helping his case any. Oh, right, I forgot. That one wasn't a random shuffling move. That one actually attacked something. So a few more careless moves and maybe I have something here. Hang on, I need to put my rook on the back rank because I can't put it behind the pawn. Um, Okay, I take one of these, one of those, one of these, and now we check. You know, I would have resigned long ago if my opponent were actually trying. Um, but since he's doing random shuffling moves trying to beat me on time, that's why I've not conceded. Like, if he'd actually shown some technique and played good moves and... Um, tried to demonstrate how to win this, um, that would be a different thing. Because certainly he could have played that far better than he did. Um, so anyway. It's not at all who I was expecting to message me there. Um, so. Let's just develop. And also in queen pawn openings, uh, frequently it's necessary to give away the bishop pair to get some kind of imbalance on the board. Um, okay, so my opponent saw that. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what is going to be next for me here. Um, I've got all kinds of potential tactics, but nothing guaranteed here. Um, hang on. Let's develop this. Consider C4. Um, oh, right. Well, okay. Okay. Yep, he's out YOLO'd me. Um, so. Hang on. There's one last tactic to be shown here. And that's that he could do rook c8 and threaten this stuff. Oh, I'm actually playing a 2000 here. That's why he's not, like, falling for anything stupid. Noted. Okay, I've got another fun text message. Um, it's not at all distracting. Uh, okay, let's develop the knight. 
hitting the pawn, and in no way threatening anything else. Okay, but yeah, at least I get the pawn. Let me check. And I do understand he's trying to trap my knight and win material and who knows what else, but um, I'm okay here. This position looks scary, but it's really not so bad. Um, okay, so I have to get my knight out this way. Do I play g4? No. g4 would be reckless. Now with all the pawns on one side of the board, we get to play some fun pawn end games. Um, okay, when in doubt, centralize the knight. Centralize the rook. Hmm. That's a bit ugly. Okay. I've got to go here and hit the bishop. Also hitting the pawn. Um. not so simple for black. Not simple at all. This one's a little bit more difficult for black than the last one. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm thinking that this... Uh, I am thinking that this should be um, my last tournament for right now. Um, and that possibly when this is done, I should come back and play something a little bit lower impact than chess. Yeah, end games are my domain. Openings, not so much. Middle games, not really. But end games, that's where I kind of enjoy what goes on in chess. Alright, so here we have the sideline in the Italian where. White plays bishop d2, and often white plays queen b3 here, even though that's not accurate. Um, no, black has full equality, and there's really nothing going on in this position. Like, absolutely nothing at all. That kind of nothing. Um... Let's see. Yeah, we'll develop the bishop. And this transposes into an endgame where nothing happens. So 
still, it's impressive that a 1580 rated opponent knows this opening. He must be better at slower time controls. Um, or rather, he must be higher rated at slower time controls. Because, I mean, he's playing this accurately. He's just... There's... Oh, wait. So many tactics now. Um, I'm just going to trade. And now I could trade down, and I think I do want to. Um, so we take the rook, take the queen, and then activate this rook. And this gets us into a pure bishop versus knight endgame, uh, I think. Unless there's some tactic that wins much earlier or faster. Um, where's that knight going? I guess it's going to e3. Um, okay, so this hits the knight and the pawns behind it. I kind of wish there were a decisive tactic that worked in my favor here. Um, Certainly my piece is more active. Um, this is difficult for white to hold. Uh, hang on. Calculating? Wait, no, he should just... If I do bishop takes, he does pawn takes. Um, but then I do rook... Th now I have to start with this king move. And now this becomes really interesting. I think this wins, um, because this is hanging. And if rooks get traded, my king makes it way up here, and this is... Well, I'd rather... Here we go. I'm winning this pawn. See? My spidey senses. Um, it's a really technical term for endgame skill. Um, But, yeah, this this is just over. It pays to know your end games, guys. You gotta know them. Know when to hold them and know when to fold them. There we go. Split up his pawns. Gonna get a passed pawn. There's my passed pawn. Yep, yep, yep. That was a good game. Dude, if you put me in one of those Italian opening end games, I'm curious just what kind of rating I would get. That would be so awesome. I would not at all mind doing that kind of stream. Okay, can we get a fried liver? Night takes. Night takes. Come on, do the night takes. Okay, well this is fine. This is still tactical. It's no fried liver, but... Uh, there are tactics. I forget how this particular line goes. Um, so, if I lose the game because I drop all my pieces, meh, no big deal. Should Knight have gone to F3 instead of where I moved it? Oh, these questions. Um... Also, what do I do about this knight? 
Okay. Can I go knight d2 or something here without losing my shirt? I don't think so. I have to do this. And... Um, this is spooky, man. This is all kinds of spooky. You know what else is a great idea? Did you guys see, um, I think it was a week ago, I played in a Frankenstein Dracula thematic opening tournament. Um, you guys should have seen it. It was awesome. Uh, I'm only saying that because I completely whooped butt in that tournament. Because I found the one move hanging pieces that most players didn't find. Alright, so this is scary. Again, my rook and h1 and on a1 aren't really that impressive. Basically, my queen's fighting this battle alone. Um, it's a good fight, but uh, it's not one that a single piece can win. I've managed to tie up the bishop to this pawn. I didn't play queen b7 because the rook b8 promptly follows. I'm sure I win a pawn, but it's just not worth it. Um, so yeah, look at my interesting piece development. Um, I don't know, like, it's just that I knew that opening. Because Zug Addict and I, every time we've played an Asimil, or almost every time, I have elected to play the Frankenstein Dracula. And he has refuted me as many times as I have played it. Now granted, sometimes after the opening phase of the game he's managed, or um, I've managed to win the game, but um, that's, again, no fault of the opening. That's just, uh, he really knows that opening. And so getting just trounced and doing so much research trying to figure out some way to beat him in that opening. I, I wonder if I've made him even stronger at it. Yeah. Um, oh, in fact, yeah, I think I did stream my playing in that event. Uh, maybe I didn't. If I didn't, that's a grand shame. Um, I'll see if I could find it in my highlights somewhere. Okay, so I hung a pawn and my opponent didn't take it. Um, I'm very close to hanging it again and again and again. There's really only so many times and so many different ways I can hang a pawn. <laughs> it's the eternally hanging pawn. There's there seems to be no escaping it. Okay, so we exchange here, and exchanging here he walks into the fork, which allows me to exchange off my knight. Okay, and now we've reached steady state, where, yes, I have an awful pawn structure, but at least I'm not hanging anything. Okay. And this is the position I have to fight back from. Um, we'll see how that goes, right? Okay. G6. Yeah, generally you don't want to push pawns on the side where you're weakest which in my case would be the king side. Um, however, I'm in such a special position here that maybe tactically it's justifiable. Probably not. Uh, but pushing seems a lot more interesting than resigning. Yeah, g5 did not work there, so that's why I retreat all the way back here. 
And now look, he's got his pawns on dark squares. Which is what I was trying to achieve by playing g6, and he's kind of helped me out. No, not just kind of helped me out, he completely helped me out. All his two pawns here are on dark squares, and it's going to be very difficult for him to open a line. Um, meanwhile, I'll just keep piling on more and more pressure, and eventually crack through. Okay, tough question. I think this is forced. I don't know if it works. But taking the other way, he plays rook h3 and I'm just dead. Deader than dead dead. Um, okay. Here I'm probably only losing an exchange or two. Hang on, this hangs the pawn, right? Which way do I take it? Okay, well this gets us into an endgame. And we all know what I think about endgames. <laughs> They're fun. Okay, this one's more fun now. Oh, minus the fact that I'm about to lose my pawn. Or not. I can't calculate. There's no time. Okay, so go back. And go forward. Uh, I have to take this. take that. I remember how to do this now. It only took me forever to remember it. Check. Okay, let's take another queen. Wow! That was fortunate, because I was not seeing a mate, and I was debating playing Queen Takes Rook and getting a stalemate there. Um, so it's very fortunate that my opponent elected not to move. Uh, sometimes moving and not moving makes all the difference. Although generally that's not the case. Alright, we got a scotch opening. So I'm just gonna oh I was gonna say I'm just gonna take on C three and then play D five. I still might do that. Um No. Now D five is a bit risky. Let's take C three anyway. Castle. And I don't know. 
just keep trying to trade more and more pieces, and maybe once everything gets traded, we'll get an end game. Um, this works, right? Please tell me this works. It doesn't work, but my opponent believed it, so that's what counts. Uh, nope, nope, nope. Everything here loses a piece. Except pulling back here. Somehow that doesn't lose a piece. But everything else does. <laughs> this one just loses the e-pawn. Um, which my opponent didn't want to take, so... Okay. Ignore how we got here. Now we're in an interesting endgame. He's going to take e6, and I have to take back. Okay. Sure, take my pawn. Um, I'm not sure that this bishop b5 was his best move. It's like he's trying to push for a win at the risk of losing the game. Maybe in some sense that's admirable, but um, I don't know. So I'm going to play queen c5 next. I'm up a knight. I can afford to trade queens. Um, I still want this end game. I don't care. Hmm. Hey, look, I trapped my knight. Aren't I the best? Um. Now I just need to find a way to justify that in endgame terms. Uh, it's going to be a hard thing to justify. Okay. Um, we have a check. Unfortunately, there's no back rank nonsense for me to that helps me out here. Um, Okay. Enter the tactics. So I'm threatening mate. No, it's not even mate. I'm threatening nothing. Um, but my opponent is threatening everything. Does he see it? Yeah, he sees it. Well spotted, sir. Well played. So, yeah, that's what I get for being reckless like he was. Alright, so there's 192 players, and I'm in the top 20. So, yep, I'm in the top 10% again. It's not bad. A lot of players would be upset by the fact they didn't score in the top 10. I personally, I'm okay with this. Yeah, my rating went down a little bit. It's a little disappointing, but oh well. What are you going to do? Hmm. So yeah, thanks to one and all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I know you guys have been a little bit quiet lately, so you've probably gone to watch somebody else. But anyhow, yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.